Well, hey folks, it's your old pal, King Waspinator. Welcome back to Total Party Skills. I'm going to talk us a few moments about Interview with the Vampire, the uh, new series that's kind of a sequel, kind of a reboot, kind of not Interview with the Vampire at all. Uh, I got most of the way through the first episode before I just kind of got bored and stopped watching, which is sad because uh, it was actually not bad at all in terms of the writing and the plotting and the acting, every, you know, the, the guy they got playing with stats, serviceable, um, possibly a bit more book accurate than Tom Cruise's portrayal, but I know that's going to be subject to some amount of argument. Obviously, you know, the elephant in the room is that uh, they've made some changes to Louis's character, which shouldn't uh, in and of itself be enough to bother me since uh, Louis and the first book of that series to me, we're always the low points. I, I, I like vampires that enjoy being vampires. I don't like vampires that whine about it all the time and wring their hands. But obviously, they cast the guy who played Grey Worm in Game of Thrones to be Louis. And when I first heard this, I thought that was going to be rather awkward, considering that Louis started off as a plantation owner, owner in a colonial era, you know, uh, uh, Louisiana. Uh, it's still, you know... The flashbacks and the part where, you know, the, the his story starts in flashback in the process of being interviewed, uh, you know, is still New Orleans, but they've jumped the timeline ahead. Uh, at first I thought, well, I guess they just want to skip over the awkward, you know, racism and stuff that in the, the various kinds of convoluted things they would have to come up with as to why a, a black guy is running a plantation full of slaves. So, you know, they conveniently skip that. But it causes, you know, Louis to only have been a vampire for about a century at the start of the story when you're dealing with, you know, the modern day end of it where he's, you know, sitting down for his interview. Um, because of being set in early 20th century New Orleans and, and the way his character has kind of been revised to be kind of like a street criminal pimp, uh, it gave me really strong Boardwalk Empire type vibes. And that's another show that, you know, I lasted through most of the first season, but just kind of petered out on it. It's not really an era I find attractive. And uh, I don't know, I've always been kind of like hit and miss when it comes to like crime dramas and stuff. Sometimes they're good. A lot of times I, I don't really care for them. Um, but interestingly though, you know, at first like, you know, the guy who played Grey Worm, like that was such like a one note, one expression character. Turns out the actor's actually got a lot of range uh, and it's good to see that he's gotten a, a more juicier role uh, to be able to like express that range and, and showcase off his skills. It's not a bad show, but it should just be called Interview with a Vampire. Uh, the, the, pinching the timeline down this much, like how are they going to deal with Claudia? How are they going to deal with the long period of time that Lestat was, you know, thought to be dead and in a swamp? Uh, are they going to have any of the stuff where you have like the circus of vampires in Europe that they go to visit? Uh, only having one century to tell his whole tale in uh, massively truncates uh, what's available with it and uh, also kind of limits you to 20th century events. So I, I, I guess we'll have get to see Lestat's adventures and Louis' adventures during World War II and the Cuban Missile Crisis and all that kind of stuff. I, I, I'm not quite sure where they're going to go with it, uh, but unfortunately it just... I don't know. Uh, a little too slow. It wasn't. It was just the pilot. I might, you know, pick back up and try to finish it. Uh, I'm, I'm not. Haven't really decided yet. Um, uh, you know, as other people have talked, probably a little too on the nose uh, with the gay overtones. Uh, I mean, Anne Rice's vampire books are full of homosexual context, but uh, the vampires themselves were not into having penetrative sex. Uh, it, it was more about the companionship. They derived their pleasure from the hunt and the kill and all that kind of stuff. Um, so, yeah, perhaps a little too on the nose. Also, you know, uh, the, the, the old uh, stereotype of uh, having uh, uh, gay characters be portrayed as villains and monsters. Uh, obviously, this show, uh, you know, does just that. They are villains and monsters. So, you know, that... that that's, that's an old uh, storytelling movie trope that people have complained about in the past. It's part of the whole reason why they de-emphasized Baron Harkonnen's homosexuality in the new Dune movie. is because they did, wanted to avoid those sorts of accusations. And so in this show, they've leaned way far into it. Um, 
you know, my mom was real big into the Anne Rice novels, uh, so I, they kind of got foisted on me as a kid. As I said, I don't really like Interview with the Vampire, but I do like The Vampire Lestat and Queen of the Damned and Memnock the Devil. Uh, I would have rather have them seen them do something... If they're going to adapt an Anne Rice thing and they don't want to follow it exactly, uh, you could have done something with, like, the Mayfair Witcher, Witches books, you know, uh, The Witching Hour and uh, Lasher and stuff like that. Uh, still would have given you the same setting and the same kind of time periods to play with and all that kind of stuff. Um, since those haven't already been adapted, there's there'd be less to compare it to. This is unfortunately there's going to be tons of people who are always going to be wanting to compare uh, this new interview with a vampire show with uh, you know the Tom Cruise Brad Pitt movie from the '90s, which may or may not be fair. Uh, you know that one obviously you know stuck to the book a little bit closer in some ways. But, you know, in spite of the things that it's massively changed and the fact that, yeah, I did just kind of get kind of like, yeah, I'm tired of watching this. Hurry up and just get him turned into a vampire. We don't need all this prelude stuff. Uh, in spite of that, though, like I, I, it was still compelling, uh, well-written. Uh, like, the characterization is good. Uh, I, I like the opening with, uh, with, the, uh, with David, the guy who's doing the interview and how they're presenting him. There's kind of a, a thing where they're going where, like, he already did the interview with the vampire decades earlier, but uh, you know he never had any traction getting it published, and the interview went poorly and all that kind of stuff. So it starts off with him being re-invited to try again to let Louis tell him his story and document it. Uh, starts off in Dubai for some reason, which was, uh, you know, I, I guess you know following it page for page. Uh, starting off in San Francisco, uh, I don't, I don't know. Maybe that also they thought would be a bit too on the nose with the show that's leaned so far into the homosexual angle of the characters. To start off in San Francisco, maybe they just thought that'd be a bit too, you know, um, obvious. Uh, the fact though that it starts off in Dubai kind of makes me uh, immediately wonder exactly who is financing this show's production. Uh, because, you know, it, it is almost like a little advertisement, you know, the way they film the city as it's sweeping in and everything looks all pretty and stuff. And they make it out like those uh, those artificial islands they've built are functional and not just half derelict, half abandoned sandbars that were made out there in their gulf uh, that have largely been undeveloped. They show the one that actually was finished and has buildings on it and is occupied. Uh, it, it, so, you know, yeah, it's a little touristy. Uh... I guess overall, I guess I'd give it a B grade. Um, it just, you know, I don't know. It, 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 well, for whatever it is, despite the fact that there's a lot of quality to it and the, the changes they've made, don't, don't, don't bother me too much. I have no like particular loyalty to the Anne Rice Vampire Chronicles that makes me feel like, oh my God, get they're ruining the lore. You know, that, that kind of stuff doesn't bother me. But there are... A few things uh, to the story that will be changed uh, by the nature of how they compressed uh, how much of history uh, Louis has witnessed. And uh, also, yeah, the uh, including the Claudia plot line, it might be best that they just skip all that, perhaps. Uh, I, I certainly uh, would say that there's a chunk of the internet that uh, is going to take that ball and run with it, uh, should they, uh, you know, include... That overtone on top of the overtones they've already put into it. All in all, though, if you're curious, I you know I I I would at least recommend checking it out. If you're into vampire stuff, check it out. It's uh, certainly better than Twilight um, or the Vampire Diaries and some of the other kind of crappier, low budget vampire media we've had. It's just uh, it's not it. I mean, yeah, for for a variety of reasons, it's kind of weird to call it Interview with the Vampire. This could have just been any vampire show and they just happen to buy the branding for the Anne Rice novels and so they can slap the title on there and give the characters names out of that. But, uh, you know, I mean, who knows how it's going to go. Like I said, I, I, uh, it's kind of a coin flip as to not whether or not I'm going to continue with it. But I just want to get my thoughts since, yes, this is a gaming channel and, uh, you know, I don't do nothing but, you know, movie and TV reviews. But since I have spoken, you know, at length in the past about the World of Darkness games and Vampire the Masquerade. I feel, for whatever little uh, overlap of audience there is, if you're interested in what I feel about Interview with the Vampire, there you go. It's uh, it's good, but also not quite what I was looking for. And so, for whatever that's worth, 
stay waspinated.